Hello, do you want to learn how to make your own mockups in Dimension CC? Stay in this video and I'll teach you how. Hey guys, hello again. I'm gonna teach you an awesome way to make really cool mockups in Dimension CC and you will see how easy it is. Let's start now. Well, if you don't have Dimension CC, the way to get it is you have to go to the Creative Cloud app, uh, which is in the corner, I think, in, in the Mac OS, in Windows, I think it's an app too, separate app. And you're gonna go to the All Apps and you're gonna look for Dimension CC here in the All Apps thing. Now that we're already here, let me let me open Dimension CC. Now that we have Dimension CC open, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new document, but we're gonna go to the three dots and we're gonna name it Coffee Brand Mockup. And the dimensions will be 1920 by 1080 and we leave everything as default and we are gonna create it. Okay, let me show you a couple things about the panel in Dimension that is really important to know. We have uh, in the panel of Dimension, we have these tools right here. So if you click uh, the orbit tool, the orbit tool will allow you to move the elements side to side. If you use the pan tool, it's gonna let you move the things up and down from the same axis. And then if you use the dolly tool, it's gonna let you go back and forward. So we're gonna go, we're gonna be using those in this video. Let me create a coffee bag now. I'm gonna double click the coffee bag and I'm gonna start using the dolly tool to zoom a little bit out and then I'm going to move the actual elements to the side and then I use the pan tool and I'm going to move it to the side. So I'm trying to center it in the screen, but there is a better way to do that. If I select the coffee bag and I go to camera and I click frame selection, it's going to actually frame the complete uh, coffee bag right away. I'm going to click the bag and I'm going to, and in the scene panel of dimension, I'm going to click the bag and I'm gonna, we're going to actually click this little arrow that is right here. And that's going to show us the actual materials that are you know, that the bag is using. Let me, uh, we're gonna change the base color to this awesome color that we have right here, which is the branding color. Now we select the bag again. We go to the same arrow. There is a there is a little square that says place graphic on model. And we're gonna click there. And we're gonna go to desktop. And then we're gonna go to sunrise coffee. And then, you know, the label. That's the, the file that I share in the description of the video. We're gonna place the, the design. As you can see, it, it has this circle that it will help us a lot at the time when we're actually resizing in the label design when we are uh, resizing the label design and let's move it let's let me show you what it does if I, if i take it from the center it will move the element whatever i want to place it right if i take it from the top it will deform the element and if i take it from the side it will deform it this way let me go back from the beginning and then we're gonna do it but pressing shift we're gonna resize the element this way we're gonna center it. I think right there is fine. And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna take the same actions. We're gonna go to actions. We're gonna place a graphic. We're gonna select the same file. We're gonna click open and it's gonna place it again. But this time we're gonna do something different. We're gonna put it at the bottom first. And then you see where it says uh, image. I can click this part right here and I can change the image from artboard to artboard. So I'm gonna select uh, artboard two because that's where I have the design. And pressing shift, I'm gonna place it at the bottom right there. Okay, quick stop right here. Let me show you something real quick. When you work in Illustrator, you can make the artboard separated and you can actually select each one of your artboards in Dimension CC program. And that's really useful because I can create multiple artboards with different assets. Okay, now that I have this artboard right now created, I'm gonna select the element and I'm gonna stretch it to make it bigger. There you go. And now that I have this element this way, I can select the artboard and I can go with the artboard tool and select my new artboard, which is this one. And, and I click fit to selected art. Boom, that's really simple. And now I have my new label or element and that's really, really useful. Let's go back to dimension. Now that I have this, it looks really nice. I really, really like it, but we can do better. Let's go with the dolly tool. We're gonna zoom out a little bit. And now I'm gonna add a coffee cup, right? I'm gonna double click it and it's gonna give me a coffee cup. I'm gonna click V to go with the selection tool and then I'm gonna move it. If you move the element from this little dot that it has right here, if you see it, there is a little dot right here. It's gonna move it on the surface of the board and it's really easy to move the elements this way. It's gonna, it's gonna be really, really good. So remember moving the elements from here is gonna just adapt the element to the surface that we have in the Dimension CC program. Now that we have the coffee cup, I'm gonna change the, the colors of the coffee cup. So it actually goes better with the branding design. Let's go with the scene uh, elements and then we're gonna go to the to the cup 
and I'm gonna change the color of the cup. I'm gonna click the, the little arrow and here, I'm gonna change the base color to the blue that we already had. I'm gonna change it to color, I'm gonna select the blue again. And for the top, I'm gonna go back to Illustrator and I'm gonna select the gold color that I have right here, which is like a goldish color. And I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna go with the dimension CC again, select the lid, and then click again in the arrow. And after I click the arrow, I'm gonna go with the base color, I'm gonna add a new color right here, Command V, and I paste the color, really simple. And now that I have both of the colors, I'm gonna add the logo in it, so same process again. Now I go to the scene panel again, and in the scene panel, one thing that I wanna do is click the cup and click the arrow again. And then I'm gonna go to the actions and I'm gonna place a graphic or model. I'm gonna click the coffee label, I'm gonna click open and it's gonna place it right here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, pressing shift while I press and shift from, shift from the bottom. And I'm gonna try to place it in the middle or something a little bit higher, something like that. There you go. It's looking really, really good at this point. And one thing that I'm missing only, it will be, let's add like a little bit of a bag to the design to make it look better. And let me find the bag right now. Something like this bag that we have right here will look really cool. I'm gonna move it from the handle that I told you again. We're gonna take it from the little dot and we're gonna move it around the objects. And let me just click it in the green area. You see the green, uh, if I ho hover the mouse on top of the green arrow here at the bottom, I'm gonna try to rotate it to the side this way. I'm gonna try to bring it forward. Sorry, let me use the orbit tool and I'm gonna go from the top to go from the top and try to see if it, it looks better okay that's fine i think that looks really nice i'm gonna try to have the elements this way and now i'm gonna use the pan tool and i'm gonna move it to the side there we go looking really really good right now and let me change now the back so to make it match with all the design that we have going on okay i'm gonna select the back i'm gonna go to the arrow and in the back i'm gonna click uh the color of the bag i'm gonna change the base color to a blue color so it looks it looks really good and nice and uh okay i'm gonna select the back now and with the back selected i'm gonna click the arrow again and i'm gonna click the actions bottom in the actions part of the layer i'm gonna click the in the actions part i'm gonna click place graphic on the model and i'm gonna select the logo again and i'm gonna try to place the logo in the middle and uh, let's make it a little bit smaller just pressing shift there you go let me click again the um pan tool i'm gonna go back i'm gonna bring it back okay i'm gonna i'm gonna click the dolly tool and i'm gonna bring it a little bit further and i'm gonna click just to try to see it better okay now that i have all this selection i'm gonna do some adjustments that i'm gonna show you right now first i'm gonna i'm gonna take this back and i'm gonna try to move it like a little bit to the side something like that i think it will look really nice like this now that we have the back let's make it a little bit bigger i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger something like that but not i feel like i stretched the actual logo but don't worry about it i'm gonna change it i'm gonna replace it i'm gonna trash the logo and i'm gonna add the logo again i'm gonna click the back with handles i'm gonna click the the actions again i'm gonna add the logo again because i feel like i stretch it too much Let's continue. I'm gonna take these elements that I have right now and, I'm, and now that I have the back bigger, let me see, I'm gonna try to okay, make the, take the coffee cup and then just move it a little bit forward so it looks kind of better. I'm just trying to frame the uh, elements. So I'm gonna take the coffee back and I'm gonna move it a little bit back. I think at this point it looks really good. And one thing that I wanna do is zoom out the elements and then tilt them with the RV tool a little bit to the top to make the picture look a kind of better. And I'm gonna move the elements, so the camera a little bit to the right. I'm just trying to center the elements the best way possible and just try to align it something like this way. And I'm gonna move a little bit this cup because I don't like where it's located too much. Now that I have all the elements aligned the way I wanted to have it aligned, I'm gonna go to the starter assets and in this filter by, I'm gonna look for the light and I'm gonna apply the studio light uh, softbox, right? So it looks more professional when we actually, you know, add the light into the elements, but you don't see right away the light applied to the elements. We need to do one more step. We gotta go click right here. We gotta click right here and we're gonna create a new camera bookmark. What a camera bookmark does is that it saves our view of the elements. Let me show you right now. If I create a new view and it's gonna be render view. So it's, this is a view that we're gonna render and I take the pan tool and I just move this or the orbit tool and I move every element like the, the cam out of the way and I go back to the camera and I click render view. It's going to go all the way back for where, where it was at the beginning. And uh, one thing that I want to try now that I have all these elements right now, I'm going to click next to the camera uh, bookmarks and it's the um, show the render, the render preview just to see how 
how the elements look, you know, after the uh, preview of the render. And I feel like it looks really nice that way. I think it's totally fine and I'm happy with the result. This is just to show you what the program does and it, I think it looks really nice. I'm going to go to render view right here and I'm going to go in the in the render settings. I'm going to go to local and I select current view and we're going to uh, go with it. I'm going to go with the high quality, which is slow. You can go with any quality, but I think the highest low one is the one that gives you the better results. Uh, the PSD format will be really good because I'm going to show you how to edit it in Photoshop and let's just click render. Okay, now that we have the elements already rendered, we're going to minimize the dimension CC program and uh, it's a little bit slow because, you know, it was rendering the program. So uh, let's go now with the element, the output that we have right now. I'm going to double click it to open it in Photoshop. And right here we have the element in Photoshop. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is just like, you know, make some a little bit some edits because when you create the file with dimension CC and that this is what makes it really, really cool is that it creates these layers that you see right now where you just using the magic wand tool, you can actually create your select your selection, specific selections. You change it to tolerance zero and then you just click. Let me select one of them only. So if I click this material selection mask, if I only click one of them, it's going to select the complete back and I make many, many changes to the design. But I'm not going to focus on that in this video. It's going to be another video. But let me show you one really cool trick that I like to do in all my designs. I take this element and I go with the rendered image and I'm going to, as, as I see here, so I'm just trying to look for the horizon line of the elements, but I feel I feel like that's too high. Let me just change it to something around right here. I'm just trying to create a horizon line so it looks a little bit more clean when we use it with the with our designs. And uh, I'm gonna make a little bit of square rig here. Let me create a little bit of a square selection right now. Right there, you create a little bit of square, and then you go to uh, I gotta fill that color with the color. In the, that color, I'm gonna put it in the Illustrator program right now, and it's this gray color and I'm going to select it and when I copy it, I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to paste it uh, right here. And I'm going to go to edit and then I'm going to click fill and I'm going to click in foreground color and we're going to click OK, Command D and I'm going to take the OK, now that I have it, I'm going to go with the filter blur. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur, but a really, a really, really small one, like a 2.3 percent. Let me just do it 1.5 percent. Let's 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 do it like 3 percent, right? Three pixels and I click OK, like a three percent is a three percent is totally fine. And now that we have this, I'm just going to change the background color for this color that I have in Illustrator right here, which is like a beige color. And I think it looks really nice. I'm going to take the color. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go back to Photoshop and I'm going to paste it in the background color right now. And here we have our final result of the design. I think it looks really, really nice. And if you have any questions, guys, just, just put it in the comments below. I'll try my best to help you with any questions you have about Dimension CC. And that's it. I hope you had a wonderful time learning how to use Dimension CC and how this can improve your skills of making your own mockups. If you find this content useful, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.